Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to talk about why I don't really like modern antivirus as a solution. So guys, if you're unfamiliar with the channel, I made vpntierlists.com. This is a website where you can check my expert recommendations when it comes to privacy tools like VPNs, password managers, and everything like that. But you can also submit your own review. These reviews are aggregated into a community tier list for both VPNs and privacy tools. There's also a forum on the website and a really good community. So make sure to check that out. And guys, unlike other channels here on YouTube, I have direct investments from VPN founders and VPN companies. Um, honestly, most of the ones that rank in top results do. My channel is 100% independently owned, which means I have no investments from VPN companies and this channel doesn't even really take sponsors. So guys, back to the video. So guys, if you've been using your computer in the last 20 years, at some point you've probably thought about using antivirus. Maybe you're like me, you can't really decide if you should use one or not. Um, you have some frustrations with one, or you might even just be a new user who is trying to figure out if you do need antivirus. Today, I want to talk about why I myself have kind of personally given up on antivirus software as a concept overall. Not because I don't care about security, but I do think the cure has sort of become worse than the disease itself. Now, here's the thing. I see a lot of people saying one reason you don't need to pay for an antivirus is because you have Windows Defender. Also, Mac and Linux both have pretty good built-in security, so you don't really need an antivirus overall. Now, I would say I mostly agree with the statement, and most antivirus companies, compared to Windows Defender, do pretty much the same thing, but just charge a lot more money for it. That said, Windows Defender isn't perfect. There are some things, like if you go to sketchy websites, that some other tools integrated from some of these antivirus solutions can help mitigate. But sometimes the cost of this small improvement to security, it comes with some significant cons. Additionally, you can also provide similar mitigation efforts through other free tools that you could just install through your browser, which I can talk about in a little bit. So guys, first let's talk about my journey through antivirus hell. So first of all, I kind of have always been a Malwarebytes user. Um, back in the day, if you kind of installed something on your computer that you know, wasn't supposed to be there. What you would do is just get the free version of Malwarebytes, scan your computer, remove things. And for the most part, you kind of get off to a clean start unless you wanted to completely restart your computer. So I used that for many years, but eventually I decided to pay for the paid version of Malwarebytes. The paid version of Malwarebytes has more real-time scanning. So it kind of prevents things from getting on your computer in the first place. And for a long time, this was a pretty good tool. It was around $30 a year with around, I do believe, five simultaneous uses. So for just $30 a year, I thought it was a pretty good price and definitely worth it. Nowadays, things are more expensive. It's around $45 a year for the standard option, which is pretty much what I would need. But Malwarebytes is kind of very sneakily added in extra cost for additional computers. So this gets very expensive very quickly. I do believe it's around $10 to $20 per extra license. So paying you know, a good chunk of what you pay per year just to have one more computer is gets crazy expensive crazy fast. Now, is it the biggest deal in the world? Well, no, not necessarily, but paying for extra licenses just kind of rubs me the wrong way, especially since I used to get these included for my subscription. This honestly turned me away from Malwarebytes. Also, I saw them as a company not really innovating too much, just kind of trying to catch on to other trends. For example, Malwarebytes kind of did a whitelisting of Molvads into um, VPN technology and kind of tried to use that as an upsell, even though it was pretty much inferior to Molvad in every way. Additionally, Malwarebytes also now purchased Azure VPN, which a lot of people don't like because Azure VPN was one of the few trusted VPN companies that owned its servers and so on, had its own kind of unique kind of thing going on, and then Malwarebytes came and scooped it up, and there is some privacy concerns with how that transaction worked. Some of the people pointed out in my community that some of the privacy policies and stuff like that were changed. And whenever you transition a company from another company, it's kind of generally not that good for user privacy overall because you don't know what the new company is going to do with the data that was transferred. Now, if you've been following the channel, you know I am a pretty big fan of Surfshark VPN. I think it's one of the best value propositions when it comes to VPNs and privacy tools. For its kind of ultimate package, you can get a very good deal that includes a lot of kind of core fundamental privacy things and you get some extra months as well. So if you check out my deal here on the channel, you could get Surfshark's core plan for around 189 a month with four months extra. 
Additionally, if you check out the other plans to Shark One Plus, you get VPN, antivirus, and a data broker removal tool for around $106 for 28 months. So this is the first term, but you can always just pay with crypto or use something like privacy.com. This is an insanely good deal, and I myself went for it because it is such a good deal. You could even get this plan for around $67 for pretty much two years. That includes antivirus and VPN. This is still one of the best deals in the industry. So I was like, why don't I just go ahead and get this deal as well since it's such a good deal? And I could just use Surfshark's antivirus because it is pretty reputable as well. It's using the Veers SDK and has pretty high ratings from semi-reputable places like avtest.org. So the most part, I thought that Surfshark antivirus was running pretty well. It wasn't that resource intensive. It was built into the VPN client itself, so it wasn't a huge bother on my computer. Didn't try to upsell me all sorts of things like other antiviruses do. And it was just kind of quietly running in the background until one day. One day I had this issue with Steam. My games weren't launching for some reason and I spent around an hour troubleshooting why. Turned out Surfshark had removed some file with Steam that it kind of had falsely flagged and it kind of had broken my entire game launch system. So I had to scrub Surfshark completely and do a couple things and I did get Steam working. It took me around an hour or two of troubleshooting but it really annoyed me. I hate when antiviruses do stuff like this, quite frankly. I would say an antivirus doing this is almost just as annoying as failing to miss something that is a danger to compu your computer for the problems it can cause. So after this hiccup, I decided, you know, maybe I should stop messing around with Malwarebytes or Surfshark. Maybe I should try a fully fledged antivirus that is reputable to see, you know, if it is better just paying a little bit more for that. Um, so I decided to try Bitdefender. Um, and it was kind of a mistake as well. <laughs> so Bitdefender is kind of like the opposite of Surfshark. It comes with all these different tools. Um, you know, Surfshark has a, uh, its VPN as its core package, and then it bundles on some other things. And Bitdefender is the opposite. It has its core kind of plan um, for antivirus, and then it bundles on all these other things with it. Honestly, I should have known that when I went to the website itself, it was going to be a mistake. L look how cluttered this website is. There's so many different plans. It was hard to decide which one to use. Um, different, um, different kind of options here, mobile options, privacy options. Yeah, these websites are inundated with different options, and it's even hard to just decide which one to go for. I can't even remember which one I picked. Maybe something like Bitdefender Total Security since it was the cheapest, but... Yeah, that, it was really annoying kind of trying to pick which one was the best for me. Now, probably the most annoying thing about Bitdefender was just like using it, setting it up. There was all these pop-ups and notifications to try to get me to use this, install this. Um, it's really kind of like almost like a marketing tool for all their different kind of products. Um, but I just clicked no, 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 no. I had to kind of get out of all these different things. The antivirus kind of client itself is very cluttered nowadays. I'm getting rid of all those things. Um, so yeah, once I got everything set up, I was like, okay, hopefully it doesn't really flag anything. It kind of did. I don't remember exactly what, but I did have some issues with that. But most noticeably, what I didn't like about Bitdefender is it really kind of crushed my system performance. Sometimes I noticed it taking like 5% of RAM or 5% of CPU. I can't remember which one it was, but it was a definite noticeable decrease in my system's performance that I was like, are you kidding me? After dealing with all this, picking the right one, clicking out of all this stuff, still kind of making my computer slower. And after a month or two of using it, it didn't really pick up anything or notice anything. So I was like, why am I even using this? So I uninstalled that as well. So guys, here's what antivirus companies don't want you to know. Most modern malware actually bypasses traditional antivirus anyways, because today's threats are way more sophisticated than the old school viruses most people would imagine back in 2001 when we clicked on a pop-up for a hot lady and then 10 minutes later, our computer our, not our lady, our computer was uh, pretty much, you know, you had to go to beg to mom to get you a new computer from a CompUSA. I, that totally didn't happen to me, all right? 
Anyways, nowadays, social engineering attacks are the modern way to do it. A lot of antivirus tools can't protect you against clicking on a phishing email, giving an uh, Indian scammer your grandma's um, social security number. Um, you know, your grandma, speaking of your grandma, she's pretty already given like $300 worth of gift cards to some Indian scammer. Um, let's just let's just be honest. But anyways, outside of that, there's zero day exploits that haven't been discovered or patched yet. Malware targeting antivirus blind spots that are designed to evade detection. And there's actually supply chain attacks where malware can hide in updates from legitimate software providers, not to mention swim swaps um, where employees get bribed to pretty much give information to your number to bypass your 2FA. The list goes on and on and on. The truth is the biggest risk to users nowadays isn't a virus that Bitdefender, Windows Defender, or anything else could really catch. It's human error. It's yourself clicking on a malicious link, downloading a fake installer, or entering credentials into a spoofed website. No antivirus can protect you from your own decisions. Yet companies still keep trying to sell features that promise they can secure you, even though the most dangerous threats usually bypass these security softwares. Not to mention that the very companies that are supposed to trust us have become security liabilities themselves. Kaspersky was banned by the U.S. government over concerns of espionage links to Russia. A lot of Kaspersky shills on YouTube, like PC Security Channel, who gets paid very good money by them most likely, um, still are kind of promoting them, probably because he's in the U.K. and not based in the United States. Outside of that, though, I guess still get shills nowadays, still refusing to switch from Kaspersky just due to their loyalty of having been using it probably for 10 to 15 years. That said, it's not even just Kaspersky. Avast also got caught selling user browsing data to advertisers through a subsidiary called JumpShot. Norton Antivirus secretly started crypto mining on user machines under the guise of a feature without informed consent. Multiple antivirus companies have also experienced data breaches, exposing sensitive customer information they were supposed to protect. So think about it. We give these companies our operating system access, private files, network activity, but they've repeatedly shown they can't be trusted with that sort of power. The security industry often runs on fear and illusion, but many antivirus companies today are more focused on upselling other products. Like I showed you before, these pages are inundated with products we don't really need or don't even know what to do with. And it makes it even hard to choose which product is the best one for us. And that leads me to my next point. The best tool you need today, the best antivirus for you is actually education. Understanding the limitations of tools and vulnerabilities and understanding what not to click on, understanding what tools that are free to use that can benefit you is really the key to not needing an antivirus is to understanding what antivirus can do. So let's go ahead and take a talk about some of my favorite tools out there that can do a lot of the things antivirus tries to do, could do, or maybe can't do. So guys, there are tons of tools out there that can protect you without needing to pay for anything, without needing to use an antivirus. Stuff like Brave Browser, use a good browser with built-in ad and tracker blocking. Privacy Badger, a Chrome extension that you can install on Brave or a couple other browsers that will block trackers and various things. Um, Brave also has components that do block things that will try to install stuff on your computer. Bitwarden, a very strong password, does extremely well against a lot of online attacks, especially if you've been a part of a data breach. Have I Been Pwned is a good website to see if you've been involved in a data breach because you could check your emails and you could see if your passwords have been compromised. Hint, they probably have been. Services such as Optory provide really good services if you've been a part of a data breach. They can remove your personal information from websites and stuff like this, which means you'll be less likely to get harassed and fished or even called with potential scams. You might even want to consider using a VPN. VPNs are not necessarily like a security tool when it comes to antivirus, but if it's more of a privacy tool, protecting you from your internet service provider, logging and tracking all the data and websites you go to, like all the porn websites you go to and stuff like this. And like I said, guys, go to vpntheorist.com, review your own privacy tools. No one's really done it yet. The website's only a week old, but you can find other useful tools recommended by the community itself with various reviews on different tools that you could take advantage of. So go write your own review, go learn about other reviews and check out more at vpntierlists.com. So guys, in conclusion, why don't I like antivirus as a product here on the channel? 
Well, I do believe it's because the industry has lost a lot of its purpose. It's taking, instead of really making computers more secure, they've made them more slower, more annoying, and often through different organization of company structures, it's kind of questionable in terms of transparency and really what company are you even trusting nowadays. The best antivirus, I believe, is one you don't even notice, one that protects your computer without nagging, doesn't try to upsell you products, doesn't have an increase in pricing after the first term, um, doesn't slow your computer down, might have said that already, um, and just generally secures your, secures your computer without compromising privacy. Unfortunately, that doesn't really exist. Sure, you could use Windows Defender, but then you're trusting Microsoft and Windows, and there's a lot of privacy implications that come with that that aren't very good overall. So it's still not perfect. And even that doesn't have the most smart integrated way to kind of prevent you from putting stuff on your computer in the first place. So guys, what's your experience with antivirus software? I know some people in my community like Bitdefender. I know some people here are probably using something like Surfshark. Some might be using antivirus or maybe one of the other plethora of tools out there. Let me know what your favorite is. Let me know if you don't use one. Let me know if you use Linux or Mac or something like that. And I'll see you again in the next video very soon.